Columbia Girls. They've had a good, good, strong week. Coached by a tall uh, Touch Blacks, a woman's a captain, Dana Turnbull. Nice work through the middle of the field. Good shutting defence there by St. Kennigan's as they look to ruck through the middle. Coming nice and direct to begin with. Good controlled scent here by St. Kent's. Looking to get outcome on the back end. Here we see Putt on the scoop. Great little shimmy there by number 12, Imogen Pilkington. And we've got our first try of the game, folks. Good strike dump here comes in. We get a good pick off the back end. Feeding our dumper and Imogen through the hole. Good footwork. Try. 1-0 St. Kennigan's as we open the score in this final. Prime example what you see when you play the game at pace there, um, Kev. You know, catching the de defence out of, out of uh, position. Yeah, just great work off the ball. Never died wondering and hit that hole and too much speed. Here we go. Meg Sycamore, their playmaker. St. Kent's going back direct through the middle. Looking to put pressure on the Columba defensive set. Here we see it off a 32 pick. Good defence by Columba. Both teams have been well coached. You know, they've got some very experienced coach coaches um, behind these two teams. So it will be a good contest to see how, how this all pans out after the 30 minutes. But so far, it's a bit of a tight battle here. Kayla Moore, she's in the thick of things here. Her and Jess Cowley in the setup. And that's a touchdown. Here we go again. You can see the strike. Wide. Very quick ball off the mark. Looking out to the wing. Beautiful pass. Great hands. But number eight. Grace Macbeth, she nails that one. Here we see St. Kent's looking for a right to reply here. Can they go up by one as they come down into the five? Looking for those extra passes to get on the outside, but ball just doesn't go to hand there as we'll see Columba try to ruck back out of this field. Nice strong run by Meg Sycamore there, showing her experience. Unfortunately, border ground. Here we see Michaela Moore in the thick of things, setting the play up. Just unfortunate. The ball went to ground just at the end. Yeah, just a little bit of disconnection there from the St. Kennigan's girls on defence, especially on their short side. Columba looking to exploit that long ball over the top. So let's go to the uh, grounds there. and We've got Harley War. Harley War, are you there? Afternoon, guys. Yes, Harley War here reporting from sideline for our girls' final. Just a couple of observations from me. Uh, in terms of the... The environment, it's extremely hot here. I think it'll be interesting to see who can last out the longest throughout this game. The uh, breeze is pushing towards, away from what the, uh, the camera would be seeing, so uh, we'll see which, uh, which team can uh, manage to make the most of the environment today. St. Kennigan's hot back on attack. Oh, great defensive touch there by the Columba winger. Or Link, should I say, sorry. St. Oh, yeah. Kent's will be looking for a nice uh, defensive press here. We can see the Columba girls going to the sideline as they box their way out of it. Oh, 
No one saw that. <laughs> I think they've called play on there, Mike. They certainly have. We've got our eyes shut. As we go to the Bunnings Warehouse replay. Meg Sycamore picks up the ball, scoop, it goes wide. The ref uh, giving that a touchdown. Good honesty by the St. Kennigan's link there. St. Kent's under a bit of pressure. A few drop balls, a couple of errors, one percenters they'll need to clean up. Let's see what they can bring down in the set of six. As they go through number eight, Cecile Valker. Mahina Paul. Great light to left pass. Unfortunate for the winger, it just dips. I think Harley was talking about that wind. It might have been pushing into the wind there. You can see on an earlier play, the number 10 for Clumber really working hard in that link position. So really getting out, making it difficult for St. Kent's to really get a good, a really good settle there. So, but fortunately, they've got the ball back. Yeah, good patience by St. Kent's there. Identifying they were going to the box and were able to force an error through Columba. Looking to go th through Colossi and Paul. Cookie at the link. Using her speed in a dive. And a miss. Olivia Fowler calling that one, but honesty there. Went for the dive. Just short here we go again, the setup. Kayla Moore, the yeah, Olivia Fowler. Close, but no cigar on that one. All smiles there, Colossia. She said that nope, no touch was made. Ball down. 2 2. Columbia just setting themselves up. There we see that short side again, just a nice little orange X there in the middle with 33 late cut. Going back to the short side where they managed to make that middle chase in as we see here. Managed to turn her shoulders, ball over the top, but unfortunately the winger couldn't finish. Ball to ground, Dali says. St. Kent's coming direct through the middle. No downtime there. Oh, big downtime there at half. They want to clean that up. Watson in there, caught in position, six touch. Colombo, back on attack. Moore certainly proving to be um, right in that play. Here we go, Sycamore, she's back in the action. One of the stars of the team. Just some little fumbles there. It's just not getting their timing right. Yeah, back into the tournament. The bodies will be hurting. The minds will be aching. It's all about that mental toughness. Here we see a forward pass. It's just those one percenters on both teams. They just need to clean that up. Become a bit more clean through the field to get more opportunities down at the other end. Team Columbus coming through the field. Just getting themselves organized. Madison Williams is in there. They're really pumping down that uh, left wing, um, Michael. They see that as an opportunity for them. Yeah, especially through uh, number three, Maya Joseph, really using her right to left pass to try to exploit that short side there of um, St. Kennigan's, but not to be that time. Just looking across the St. Kennegan's teams, a lot of counties representation out there, a lot of counties uh, reps amongst this side, so we should see some good connection as we come through the field, as uh, I imagine a lot of time has probably been played together. Even some familiar names, I see Jean Marsh here, down on the sheet, is uh, Cecile Valher's favourite player. 
a great representation of uh, County's Monaco Women's Touch. See good patience here through St. Kent's. Putt with the roll ball. Goes to Paul. Comes on the snap back. Penalty, we've got to reset. Let's see what they can do here. Just on this play here, guys, we've got some direction from the referee on the main field, just instructing his link on the right side, closest to the camera, just to continue to roll forward. Let's see how important that'll be as the game progresses to see if the defence are complying with the referee's instructions. Paul with the long ball out. Yeah, we just saw the body turn there, so unfortunately for Mahina Paul, it... Uh, delivered the pass forward. Maybe if we went left to right, we may have gone back. Nice direct work up the field by St. Columbus. They're looking for the extra pass. Good touch there by number 14, Brooke Finotti. Fowler and Sycamore combination. Let's see what they pull. Meg looking for someone there. Did they connect? Oh, that's a great defensive effort there. I can't see the number, but she's rucking the ball out as well. Great defensive effort by St. Kent's to make sure that it didn't go 3-2 as we go into the last three minutes of the first half with a strong drive there, trying to get momentum through our transition. Val here on the ball, good pick, showing her speed. That's good for St. Kent's. They're completing their sets. They're just getting down there, putting pressure under, uh, making Columba get put under pressure. Nice scramble defense in the end there by St. Columba. What's also been very impressive over uh, the two days, here we go. Meg Sycamore finding space down the wing. As I was saying, you've been very impressed with the refereeing over the last uh, couple of days. So, you've been very fortunate to be able to, to do a couple of things here, develop new referees as well. Yeah, Michael, you made a good point there. Just as much as it's development for the players, it's development for the referees as well, because they're going to be just as much the future of the game as we are as players. I can add on to that for you guys. Three referees here on our field. We've got Dali Tui Taylor, Cameron Wooden, and Alicia Ruaiti. The campaign for not just the players, but also the referees is really important this season as they head into the 2019 Touch World Cup. Referees are all part of the Afi Fano here from Touch New Zealand. And Harley just touched there on the uh, World Cup in 2019 in Kuala Lumpur. And I think uh, looking at these team sheets, we may uh, see three or four of these girls feature in their open women's side. So great for the sport to see uh, a massive amount of talent within our youth. As we see St. Kent's over the top, unfortunately, ball doesn't go to hand. I think we see a forward pass there called by Dali. As we go to the Bunnings Warehouse replay, yeah, just over the top. Unfortunately, the pass delivers forward. Colombo will look to capitalize on this as we come into the last 40 seconds. This is a big moment for them. They want to go up 3-2 leading into the half and take all that momentum into the second. Nice direct play in the middle there. Again, we've got the 19 combination of Sycamore and Fowler. Nice follow. Yeah, number two, Elise Conway did well there. Nice little block play from Columba, but she was able to get around it to make the touch on that inside pass. Now we have it handover as the time's ticking away. I make a time up. Last play of the half. Safety first. Oh, they're testing their hand here. No, that's it. Time for the oranges. Time for the oranges. I love that. I hope they come in a tip a tip top container as well. We're going old school. You know, impressive performance by both teams. Very even as we see a two-all scoreline leading into the uh, leading into the second half. 
and you can see already the key players really finding their finding their straps are near the ball starting to call the plays and it's just you know it's in those final passes just not going to hand on some of them yeah both sides we can see the experience coming in as we see dana here on screen just giving her team direction about what they need to do in the second half what will be some of the things the um dana will be probably passing on to the players michael i think uh she might just be telling them to just stay stay patient uh keep going to what's worked the short sides work for them in the first half so we might see more of that uh through maya joseph using her right to left we saw that in the first half in that left hand corner uh, uh two or three opportunities and they managed to capitalize on two so i think she'll just be saying keep going to what works And for St. Kennegan's, they'll just be looking to stay patient. When they've stayed patient on their recounts on the line, they've got outcome and opportun uh, opportunity that's come with outcome, and that's how their uh, tries have been scored as well, through a good amount of experience that they have through their middle. Well, that's some half time it's happened for you, folks. I think when we talk about combinations here and linking, you mentioned earlier, you know, one of our big provinces, the counties, Monaco. We've also got uh, in the St. Columbus girls squad you know a good representation from the otago province so the well represented in this uh columbus girls team so we would be expecting that uh the the um they'll be used to um each other and what they need to run so cool heads cool heads as we head into the second half yeah, 15 minutes to go for both of these sides to battle it out become, to become the 2018 National Girls Champion at the Secondary School Nationals here at Bruce Pullman Park in uh, Papakura. All right, folks, here we go, getting into the nitty-gritty, the second, the final half of the second half of the championship So Colombo will look to start us off in this half. St. Kennegan's on defence. What's been quite uh, visible at, at this year's uh, secondary schools tournament is the uh, the relationship with Bunnings Warehouse. It is the first time in terms of uh, a Touch New Zealand event where we've been quite visible uh, with our new uh, sponsor. So we welcome on board uh, to Touch New Zealand Fano the Bunnings Warehouse. Sycamore with the ball. And there we see what Harley talked about in the first half, just that rolling off the line, making sure that we're promoting ourselves going forward as another penalty was given there. Michael, I'm seeing a bit of a combination here. So on the field of, you know, where I see uh, Meg and there's also Olivia. Is this something that the coach, um, in terms of the combination, is this something that they put in place here? Yeah, I, I imagine that Dana would have given each of those girls a role and responsibility and, and working together will be just a part of that as they seem to work together well. As we see, unfortunately, the Carlos Spencer through the legs just didn't quite pull off there for Meg. Good direct drives here from St. Kennegan's, getting into the 10. Going back through Valhurst, she's been very dominant in the first half of her picks. As she steps off the left, big right to left pass across the pool, using some speed. Oh, great draw and pass there. And number 14, Brooke Fanotti is in the corner. That'll take St. Kent's out to a 3 2 lead. And here we go. Paul is finally drawing the winger in. Winger caught in two minds. Beautiful touchdown in the corner. Yeah, probably some of her seven skills there, just engaging both defenders and then a nice draw and pass to put that winger in in the corner. Good work by the St. Kennegan's girls. All came through their transition. Joseph. Got her combination there. Maya Joseph. Good connection on defense there by St. Kennegan's. Showed a lot of character there to hold the Columba girls out. Looking to ruck out of trouble. 
Good drive there through Watson. To Valher. Finds number 15. Inside support. Back to Valher. Good, good eyes there by Moffat. Just finding that inside feed. Touches up their sleeve. As it goes to Colossi. Out to Harris Tavita. Back inside to Colossi. Columbus losing a little bit of sh shape on defense. Getting themselves composed. Here we see a 32 pick through Conway. Nope. Just nice and patient. Didn't want to overdo it. Colossi with some speed. Late cut. Just trying to end the set there. In Columbus, direct drive through the field. They can't balance back out. Olivia Fowler, one of the key players in this team. Let's see what they can produce this time around. Oh, great defensive and attacking effort there as we see both players diving into the line, but fortunate enough for St. Kennegan's touch is made. Rucking through the field. Oh, well, well done there by the number 14, Brooke Fanotti. Was able to stay alive and all. Dally's caught it, lost control. Fowler brings the ball back, direct in the middle. That's good work there by the St. Kinnigan's winger. Understood that her link came up to make the touch, so she made sure that she came there to support that outside check with her. Here we go, Joseph with the ball. This time... Do they make it? Michaela Moore this time. Direct hit. Joseph looks long. And it's a foot race. Michaela Moore for St. Columbus. That's a touchdown. Yeah, just a nice bounce play there by Columba. And Moore able to get on the outside and too much speed. For St. Kent's three. Columba, three. Watson. Been the strike dump here. Bell here on the ball. Back to Paul. We'll look for these three here. They've been very prominent in their setup for their attack. Let's see what they can create. Pick and go. Can they get free? No, good speed there by Mahina Paul. Just saw that the defense overread that one, managed to exploit the short side, but just couldn't find a uh, player to get get the ball down. Go to the subbing box in Columbus. Get fresh pair of legs back on the field. Nice direct. Kayla Moore, she's back on. Getting themselves into a position. Her and Joseph. Nice draw and pass. Kayla Moore, again, setting that up for St. Columbus. Here we go. Kayla Moore around the outside. Draws in the link. And that leaves the wing in two minds. St. Columbus, they're in. Another touchdown. Yeah, Michaela Moore just using all of her experience there, screwing up the player, taking her on the outside, and then exploiting the draw pass. Good try there by Columba. As we near the halfway point of the second half. Michael, what do you think Lance will be saying to the St. Kinnigan, Kinnigan's girls at the moment to try to get them back into this game? Well, you know, one of the key things I think Lance will be saying is, remember what worked for us in the first half? Remember where our strength was? Long balls were working for us. We just need to get, make sure, in the prime example, make sure that we get a good 
uh, foundation when we're on the line. We're still in here. Yeah, just as another mistake creeps in there for Columba. Ford pass off the ruck. With big finals like this, we have the best referees appointed, and you can't sneak any forward passes against these guys. So for me, it looks like whoever can make the least amount of mistakes will go on to win this match. Yeah, great call there, Har uh, Harley. As we see the combination for St. Kinnigan's, Colossi and Paul, played quite a lot together, these two. Members of the Open Women's squad. But there we see another era. So St. Columba just need to settle things down. Get their set of six. Get themselves in a position down the field where they can have a good strike. Here we come. Good touch there by Leverick. Foul Hutt, right in the hard. Foul and Sycamore. Here they come. The combination. Sycamore. Using her leg speed. Good touch there by Fanotti. She's come up with some big plays. And great yard out. Way to get out of trouble as it goes through putt. Terrific yard set here by St. Kennegan's as they'll look to get to an outcome on the back end as it goes through Watson. Hands up in the air by St. Columbus saying, I'm not involved in that ref. The ref sees it that way as well. Nice yards. But Joseph and Moore. Things are working really well. Yeah, made some good touchdowns between this combination. Let's see what they can uh, pull off this time. Good work by St. Kennegan's there, just making sure that their point defenders were pushing and pulling. And there we see a good defensive set as Pilkington makes the touch. It's a tight tussle here, Michael. We've got St. Kent's three and Columba uh, four. So it's close here. Yeah, just looking at St. Kennegan's, they're getting good momentum as they're going through the field. They just have to get a good strike at the back end. That's what they've been missing as it goes through Colossi. I think she's appealing that the referee looked like a player there. How's it feeling on the ground there, uh, Harley War? I'm standing behind the St. Kent sub box. I can feel a lot of tension coming from it. As some of the girls were substituting off their last set, uh, Jamie Corsi in particular seemed a little bit rattled. Let's see if they can keep a calm head going into the final stretch of the game. Yeah! And there we see it. Columbus scoop through again. Through that same uh, player, Meg Sycamore, able to find a free link. As we see Colossi demand the touch here. Referee calls the play through. Good ears by Columba, and there we go. Out to a two-point buffer. It's a strong part of Meg's game. We've seen this uh, both here in the domestic and international scene. Very strong, quick off the mark. Just in case, just seemed a little bit rattled. Harley, as we uh, enter the final uh, three minutes of this game, how does how do you think the referees will be feeling in terms of with the pressure? Uh, building in terms of on both teams. How do they reckon they will channel it? The first response is communication will always lift, especially as we head towards the uh, the in goal area. Uh, let's see how Dali responds in this situation. Obviously, it's a uh, pretty physical. Uh, oh, here we go. A massive um, a massive five opened up there with some good communication to the defence, leading to that touchdown. It's exactly what. Lance Watson, he would have dialed up on that play. They know that they've, their, the yards through the field is always great. They've just, as Michael Kavanagh said earlier, is just making sure that they get in a position to a good strike. 
Yeah, we saw a good strike dump there on the end. I wasn't able to catch the number, but a great pick there. Able to find the free player to bring this back to within one. Two minutes to go. Here we go again. Sycamore. Again, demanding the touch, but play on called. We're going to a 6-4 scoreline. Here we go. Straight dump. Sycamore sees the gap. She's got good leg speed. It's actually catching the link out of position. Once she made the re pass release, it was all but done. St. Kent's will be looking to score here as we just see an error creep in. Columbo will be looking to stay patient, try and run this clock down. As we go, 1 minute 30 to go. This game is much about uh, physical and mental attributes, but, you know, it's cool heads, keeping calm and composed, especially at this, this end of the, the game, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, the bodies will definitely be feeling it after a big three days of touch, so it's all about that mental toughness when we get to this finals end. Who's going to have the mental ability to get through the full 30? As we see through Paul with her right to left, second phase, going back against the grain. Good speed by Paul. Is it off the head? Counts as five. So we see Colossi demanding the ball was down as we go to the Bunnings Warehouse replay. Good pick back to the short side. As we head into the final 30 seconds. Columbo will just be looking to complete this set as they ruck off their line. As we hear there, Dana yelling out at her team, just make sure we complete every touch. Two to go. On the buzzer. Celebrations all round by Columba girls. As they take the finals out, Columbus set seven, St. Kent's four. Yeah, just seeing the experience there of Michaela Moore, right on the end, in and off in style. Nice vision as she finds her winger in the corner. Columba, New Zealand Secondary Schools champions in the girls' grade for 2018. Great dive and roll by Liz, uh, Liv uh, Preston in that one. Well done, girls. Well done to both teams. Congratulations to the coaches, managers, and the support staff of both Columbus Girls and St. Kent's. They're related. Tears of joy. Yeah, as we can see the emotion on the faces there of the Columba Girls as they head towards the St. Kennegans to congratulate them on a great final. And I must say also, you know, one of the things that, you, that I probably noticed is that the referees actually just became a part of the game and it just ran really smoothly. So congratulations to our three very experienced referees. Yeah, they gave us a good free-throwing game, opened up those fives, so we were allowed to see some good picks off the back end and we saw some good running touch. So George Yonke, do we have you down on the field, my friend? Not quite. We are expecting George Yonke down on the field, giving some time uh, speaking to uh, the captains. So we'll come. Uh, here we go. George Yonke walking out to the field, just finding some opportunities. Gills come to get us in Columbus. They're going to take this title back to the school. If you want. We can do something different. Michaela! George Yonke just asking Michaela Moore to come across. Here we go. Congratulations. 
Angel. Oh, what a day! 2018 Bunnings NZ Touch Nationals for the secondary skills. I'm here with the champion of champions, Michaela Moore. I heard that name all day on the commentary. How outstanding was that game? Oh, it was amazing. St Kent's is such a good side and we were just honoured to get out here on this field and to win um, in my last year is just the most amazing feeling and I'm so grateful. Oh, it's a good one to put in the record books, mate, and you did your school proud. Tell us about the history and battles coming to secondary school for you guys. Um, yeah, so when I started in year nine, we were just a little school down in Dunedin, not really big in touch or anything, and every year we've just progressed so much and we've fought against all the battles and all the big teams and everything, and I'm just so proud of all the girls for everything. Oh, awesome. And you had a secret weapon in your back pocket there in the coaching staff. Tell us about this lady. Uh, Dana Turnbull is the backbone of our team. She is the reason we've improved so much. She brings such an awesome environment into our team. It's like a sisterhood and honestly could not be more grateful for her. She made me the player that I am today and all these other girls. So she's awesome. Oh, mate, what a role model, this lady. I'm not going to hold her up anymore. I'm letting her go to celebrate. Look at the cuddles. Look at those cuddles over there. They're feeling it. This is the moment we're made for and I'll let you go Kelly. well done bud, awesome, you. cheers, I was, hope I was hoping to catch up with the coach or the captain from St Kennegan's but they are off now just warming down, looking after their bodies so we'll get ready for the action for the mixed grand final coming at you at 2 o'clock, touch, what a game. This Touch New Zealand live stream is supported by Bunnings Warehouse and SAS Sport.